This is Will with Cigar Coop, and I'm at the 2012 IPCPR trade show, and I am in the 262 Cigars booth with uh, the president of 262 Cigars, Clint Aaron. So, Clint, thanks for taking the time to join us. Coop, pleasure. My pleasure. So, so this is your first IPCPR. It is. First time exhibiting, first time here. Don't really know what to expect. Uh, you, you come in and you're just almost overwhelmed by the... Just the, the huge convention center A and then just the number of people that are coming in and, and it's really it's a great experience. Right. So I've been by your booth a couple times, I've seen a lot of activity going on. Yeah. I, and I think I think we can attribute that to the Revere. Uh, we we just launched in, launching the Revere at the show. It's shipping in October. People smoked them yesterday, came back today and were just, you know, want, just place an order for Revere. So it, it, it's so far in, in the day and a half it's been very well received. Excellent, excellent. So uh, give us a little background of the two six two line. Well, uh, let's just kind of start from the beginning. 262 stands for February, the second month of 1962, and that's when JFK signed the embargo. Not the fact that he did it, but how he did it. He had Pierre Salinger, his press secretary, go round up all the Cuban age, up with Petit Coronas, and he brings them back, and then JFK pulls out the embargo and puts pen to paper. So he got his before everybody else would get theirs. Coop, I know you're an ambassador for CRA, so we're, we're heavily involved with the CRA because I don't have any tobacco heritage, Cuban heritage, but I'm, I'm passionate about my rights as an American to smoke a perfectly legal product. So we're, we're very active with that. And, you know, you see the, the smoking bans, the taxations, the regulations, the government's looking above that. So they enforce these and impose these, but they're all they're all smoking wherever they want, whenever they want, Cuban cigars, whatever the case may be. So so we're this is kind of our call to arms, saying, let's gird up our loins, you know, and, and you know, fight for our right to light, essentially. So that's... That's kind of the whole backstory of 262. It's, it's not the area code where I, where I grew up. I think 262 is Milwaukee area code. Right. So. <laughs> so we get that question a lot. But we've got um, kind of to jump into the cigars. We started off with the Paradigm. Right. Comes out of Honduras, Brazilian Montefina wrapper. Medium strength, medium body. Notes of dark chocolate, coffee, some leathery undertones in there. Uh, fast forward um, nine months after that or so, we launched the Ideology, which for me is a little more of a breakfast smoke. Nicaraguan, Cabana Rosado wrapper. You get some of that Nicaraguan pepper and spice poking through, but it's a very creamy, smooth cigar. Right. And we just talked about the Revere here, which is a Nicaraguan Puro, coming out of uh, Esteli, Condega, Jalapa, Esteli tobaccos in there. You don't get overwhelmed by what you typically think of with a Nicaraguan tobacco, of being peppery and spicy. It's a very smooth, subtle cigar. I get notes of, of like raisin, uh, right. mocha. I do get that, that pepper and spice coming through, but it's not overbearing and great cedar undertones. Excellent. And how has the Revere been received so far? So far, so good. Uh, you know, like I said, people people have come by and, and smoked them yesterday and came back and just been writing orders all day for them. So. Yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent year, yeah. excellent year. Yeah. So, and then, uh, you know, we've got the uh, the Lancero in the Paradigm as well, which is, right. is flying off the shelves as well. We're launching a 660 in the Paradigm here at the show, trying to, you know, boat, you know the, the boat, both, both of the worlds or whatever. Right. Um, We've got a Robusto in the Ideology 5x50, so we've got two new two new sizes for the show and then a full-blown new line. Excellent. So, That's a good segue into what I want to talk about, some industry trends. What are you seeing happening right now in the industry? You know, the 660 was, you know, we had that craze for a while, and, and I, I dug my heels in and said, I'm not doing a 660, so I did the Lancero. People told me I was stupid. Can't keep them on the shelf. And now I've walked into shops. I've got a, a shop in Tennessee, and of the six or 700 facings he has, he has... I think 20 facings of Lancero and maybe four or five facings of 660. So I, I would like to think, you know, just kind of talking with some of these retailers this week and other manufacturers, they, I think we're, you still have the, the folks that want the 660, but I think we're starting to see a trend to the smaller ring gauge, the Lanceros, the Coronas, the Lonsdales, things, things like that. So um, it, it's very interesting because you have both, you know, both ends of the spectrum. And, you know, they say different smokes for different folks. And I know you're a, a bigger ring gauge smoker, uh, but I think you can appreciate the flavors and the nuances that you get with the smaller ring gauge as well. Absolutely. I'm learning about that quite a bit. Yeah. So, Clint, um, thanks very really much for taking some time uh, today. And appreciate it. Best my, of luck. My pleasure. Take care. Thanks, Coop.